All right, get out your notebooks and your pen and write this down. You're going to write down what your why is. Why, in the name of God, did you even remotely get involved with network marketing to begin with? If you're an existing MLM uh, person, existing network marketing professional, or if you're somebody who's like, man, my, uh, my cousin, my best friend, somebody I haven't talked to in 10 years I went to high school with, slid in my DMs and they wanted to recruit me, what is your why? I'm going to keep this extremely simple. What we do, and remember, I'm part of the problem. I came from the old school network marketing years ago where I did like everybody else, which is all you have to do is get two people on the phone with me, get two people in your team. You're going to make a million dollars in your first six months. Network marketing, the key to being a great network marketer is influence. Influence. But we leverage manipulation for some strange fucking reason. When you put integrity and character into play, manipulation doesn't even exist in your world. Influence does. But sadly, with the network marketing profession, what we do is we leverage people's whys, that emotional pain point, like all sales does. And what we do is we sit there and just paint the picture. You can retire your husband. You can make a million dollars. You can wind up uh, sitting on the beach working from your laptop. All this shit that can happen, but it's not realistic for the common person. So what we want to do is, because one of the biggest lies in network marketing is that anyone can do it. Anybody could do it, but they just don't because you have to learn and educate yourself, actually develop new skills like sales, pitching, closing, marketing, uh, uh, branding. Oh, dear God. The amount of work that people don't do to be successful in this business is the, is the fundamental reason why it has such a high failure rate. And that failure rate is the quitting rate. I'm going to get ahead of myself. We'll talk about that later. You got in, right? Or you're, you're existing in right now. And you're like, what's my why? If you are a current MLMer, sit down. Revisit your why. Because it needs to be reflective of what's true, right? Uh, I, want, I want this car. I want this mansion. I want that. You know damn well that if you got that, that monetary thing, that house, that car, you'd be happy for about two weeks and be fucking miserable again. What is your why, period? For me, for me, I know the uphill battle that this industry is. I'll be extremely blunt with you. I want to be the absolute best represent representative, the best ambassador of this business. That's my why. This bit, making money is so much easier in other companies, other projects. Network marketing, it's simple. It just requires a lot of fucking work that people aren't willing to do. But just because you're willing to do it, when you wind up bringing other people in, it doesn't mean they're going to do what you did, right? That's the duplication process. So my why is I want to absolutely leave a fantastic mark on this industry, knowing that my work, my character, my integrity impacted so many others, and we could take the slap the fucking words out of the anti MLM community's mouth of it's a scam it's all those people are just they're 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 losers they're quitters you god knows if you watch their content you know they're so full of shit that they're just fucking they're, they're, they're a waste of our time but they're essential because without them they wouldn't have exposed a lot of this crap we need to fix anyways when you get into your why what is your why your why has to be big but it has to be also purposeful that is reflective of who you are there's three areas that I think that you need to look down to, right? You need to look at, what, and I call them the three C's. It's cash, commerce, and culture. What do you want out of the network marketing space? When I first got involved, it was pure cash. I gave a shit about money and nothing else. Did not, I didn't care about selling, didn't care about the product, didn't care about any of that stuff, and I sure as shit didn't care about the product or the culture. I didn't go to the the uh, the, uh, the the events, the 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 the, the yearly annual uh, rallies where everybody was at all the I, conference. I didn't go to those because I didn't want to be a part of that culture for a lot of reasons. You know, I didn't I didn't associate it very positive with how we represented the industry. And here I'm trying to fight against it, and people are doing the same damn shit, making these TikTok reels and Instagram reels that really misrepresent the shit. So over time. There's a big fluidity in these three. These things together, they're synergistic, right? That infinity symbol, they go together. The second that my business and my, my love for network marketing kind of rekindled was when, the, when I went to the biggest source of aggravation and pain for me, which was the culture, and I said, okay, I have to sit there. They all, these three all work together. 
nonstop. I love making money. Well, to love making money, you absolutely have to love commerce, which is the high volume of sales of something, right? And I, okay, I learned to, to embrace being a salesman, right? So in the first in the first few years of my network marketing journey, it was about money. And I, I did the same thing everybody else did, which was bring people to my upline and have them talk to her. And she's going to do all the closing and this and that. When I took some time off from network marketing and got back in and I discovered shit, I have to get good at sales. For me, because of my background, I came from the retail industry, then I went into bartending, and then I became a police officer. All three of those, if I was not good at sales, my life was miserable. Clearly, the customer is always right in retail. If you want a good day, just make the customer happy, learn how to sell. As a bartender, if I treated you like crap, if I didn't properly sell, and appease my client, my customer, my bar guest, I wasn't making any money. And as a cop, the easiest thing in the world was to talk people in handcuffs. When I learned how to talk people in handcuffs, to make them think the easiest and best path of least resistance for me is to put my hands behind my back without any resistance, I'm a great, I'm one of the greatest salesmen on the planet because I understand the value of conveying information in a positive, influential way. So I learned to love sales and, and, and commerce and being the, you know, the highest sellers with the business. I love that. The culture was the biggest pain point for me because it had, it, then I had to admit that although my way works fantastic, there are many other ways out there. There surely are. You need to sit there and cherry pick from the very best people that you think, and then you take it and form your own stuff. You imitate before you innovate. I did it. Everybody does it. You, sh you need to do it. But that's where your skill sets are going to be developed from. So when it comes down to your why, yeah, maybe you're going to go, oh, it's, you know, I, I, I want the house. I want to retire my husband. I want this. I want that. Maybe you need to take a more uh, 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 basic step and say, what does the business represent? The business represents me making money, me developing myself as a salesperson. To, it, maybe I'm not really comfortable with sales just yet. Or maybe it's me part being part of a community that our culture is, and then whatever you define that as, as a group. So these three things all live together synergistically. And to be honest, when you embrace that, and like this is, this is my passion, this is my strength, this is my pain point and weakness, when I start letting this reflect by saying, okay, in order to make more money, I have to embrace the culture and I have to teach people more. I have to get more involved with people. I am a high functioning introvert. So I have to get more, oh, it's, I, have to, I, have to, I have to raise more people up, which is gonna make me a lot more money. Okay, that's not so bad. Well, sales skills, I had to learn sales skills and say that if I could teach sales skills to other people in the culture and the community and have them not so afraid of it and not see it as such a slimy fucking business, that it was going to develop everybody. A, 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 a rising tide lifts all boats, right? So when it comes down to it, you, the first thing you need to do when it comes down to network marketing, either as a pre-existing person in the industry or somebody who's coming in, sit down. And if the fucking person who's trying to recruit you is all about, oh, the money and you're going to retire and you're going to do this, you're, gonna, you're not. You're not. If you want to make the income that will replace all other incomes that you're, you're pulling in right now, give yourself four to five years. Start right there. You need to shut those people up who are in your ear saying, oh my God, you're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. Treat this like a business, just like any other brick and mortar out there that's going to fail in the first five years. You want to take that five-year window. And if you fail, it was not because of your lack of effort. It was whatever it else is out there. Maybe you just didn't uh, uh, progress as a salesperson. Maybe you didn't learn your skill sets. Maybe your company did suck. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of, of jumping into these new network marketing companies and be, uh, speed up like that because they're around for two, three, four, five years, and then they're gone. Personally, if I was going to go into a network marketing company, just my suggestion, I would go to an established one. I would go into Amway. I would go into Herbalife. I would go into some other company that's been around for a long time because who's ever telling you that shit, you got to get in while it's hot. You're doing nothing but perpetuating a lie by dumping in people who have no skill development, no, no people skills, no personal development, no sales tactics, no pitching, no closing, no marketing, nothing. And then you're going to be a scumbag because you got in first, made your money and left. If you want that, plenty of people on YouTube will teach you that shit. I think it says something for somebody who can go into an established business just and fucking dominate you know, with something that's already been open. It's just how it works. 
find out what your why is. Sit down and talk to yourself and say, all right, the money is great, but what does the money represent? You really need to look at all three and rank. Is this my number one? That's my number two. That's my number three. And watch over time as how they wind up interacting with each other and developing uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses that are going to feed off of one another to get your business going. That's it. Short content video on this. If you're in network marketing, redefine your fucking why. If you're getting into it, why are you getting into it? If it's to make fucking millions and this and that shit, you're going to fucking fail. If it's to make money and income, if it's to become uh, uh, skilled in sales, marketing, pitching, closing, objection handling, presentations, that these skills can be used in any other uh, avenue you ever go into, that's great. If it's to develop or be a part of a culture, and you mean you need to make sure that culture is good, right? You need to watch what they're doing. You need to watch whether or not your upline that brings you in, if they have integrity, character, all that. I would vet everyone. Say, I'm interested, but I want to see more about the group. Anybody who pressures you, no, you don't, you don't need that fucking shit. Guys, 708-982-0974, 708-982-0974, bullofmlm at gmail.com. Get a hold of me if you have any questions. I will more than happy uh, converse with you, talk with you, find out what you need, and see if we can get a plan of action for you, for your business. But I'm going to try to recruit you for mine. You know that. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.